We see a broad trend, the developing misalignment between global economic growth on the one hand and social progress on the other. We need to rebuild confidence in the business's ability to respond to the challenges we face. This affects us all. Corporate governance can help revisit what purpose does business serve and what is its <laughs> license to operate. At ECODA, we would like to take a forward-looking approach to uh, sustainable finance regarding corporate governance. As European Voice of Directors, we would like uh, to uh, uh, talk about what clarification of um, uh, doing, acting as director in the interest of the long-term interest of the company really means, taking into account also all stakeholders. So does that mean a redefinition of co uh, co a company's interests and also a redefinition of director's duties? So we should reflect if we really want to foster sustainability focus of the boards that we then have to focus first on what is the corporate interest. Because there is a huge legal difference between the duty of a shareholder and the duty of a board member. The duty of a board member is to foster the corporate interest first and only. And if the director doesn't foster the corporate interest, he becomes liable for any negative effect of not fostering and maybe fostering its own personal interest. There's no law, in my opinion and in my knowledge, that obliges a shareholder to be anything but an egoist. The financial risks of unsustainability brings into the very core of the role of the corporate board that fundamental and research-based changes to corporate governance are necessary. The financial risks of unsustainability, including uh, the liability risk where a corporate board must be prepared to answer for the environmental and human rights wrongs in the global value chains of the business, changes everything. I think governance Corporate governance can provide clarity on roles. It can provide clarity on responsibilities, duties if you like. It can provide clarity on reporting lines, that's more internally. And it can provide clarity on accountability, that is to whom, to what organization, to society, whatever, are organizations accountable. The idea that one size fits all is probably a bad one. Smaller and more innovative firms that are quickly scaling up are probably more in need of flexible corporate governance provisions that can quickly be adapted to a changing business model. But it's not only big versus small, and we heard about that as well, but also listed versus non-listed companies. It is a fair point to assume that privately held companies might not need the same strict corporate governance provisions as publicly listed ones, simply because individual retail investors are less at risk. Therefore, I advocate for a corporate governance approach that leaves a lot of flexibility to companies.